are tidying up some loose ends right now, ladies and gentlemen, on what is the hottest form of Alabama football talk. It's in my own words with your shrilly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. I am live in studios. We've had a great week of shows. Got a chance to kick things off of speaking to a good friend of mine, former Alabama linebacker Nico Johnson. From there, we dove into my five impactful freshmen for the 2019 college football season where Alabama is concerned. And we will wrap things up by diving into the five teams of which I see, given the tide, the biggest push in the 2019 regular season and doing this from five to one we start off with the Arkansas Razorbacks I know a lot of people don't have much faith in the Hogs especially with the group coming off a two and ten season Alabama will host the Razorbacks in this upcoming year but one of the things about Chad Morris Chad Morris, when he was at SMU, Southern Methodist University, he started off his career there at 2-10 and and then gradually made the Mustangs better. Along with that, Morris being an offensive mind that he is, he was the man, he was the genius behind the brilliance of Clemson's offense under Dabo Sweeney from 2011 to 2014, if I'm not mistaken producing the likes of a three-time 3,000-yard quarterback in Tosh Boyd, a bunch of big play receivers in Sammy Watkins, DeAndre Hopkins, and Mike Williams. I mean, Chad Morris did a lot of big things for those Tigers in helping them or positioning them to the national championships they would ultimately win in 2016 and 2018. And when you look at the Razorbacks, when they have had production decent production at the quarterback position balance on offense and scrappy players on defense they typically give alabama a tough out case in point go back to 2010 when the razorbacks had big time ryan mallet at quarterback missing of an arm it was a back and forth game alabama edged out the hogs 24 to 20 from 2010, we drop on down for 2014. Y'all remember that game? Rainy, muggy, unbearable. DWR, Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville. Arkansas had a good play at quarterback with Brandon Allen. Strong running backs, Alex Collins, Jonathan Williams. Scrappy players on defense. And it took a late game interception by Landon Collins to steal the seal of a deal. 14 to 13 and even down to 2015 with once again Brandon Allen at quarterback the Razorback held a 7 to 3 lead on Alabama until Jake Coker found Calvin Ridley for an 81 yard touchdown in that game helping the tie pull away 27 to 14 so once again when Arkansas good quarterback play balance on offense scrappy defensive players They've been a tough out, and Chad Morris has that in this upcoming season. You got the quarterback in Nick Stark, of whom Alabama, of whom Arkansas, excuse me, got in the transfer portal from Texas AM. You got a top 25 signing class for 2019. Both Dev Waley and Rakeem Boyd are back in the backfield. And then defensively, you got some pieces coming back including the likes of Mattel Van Agem on the defensive line and Dijon Harris at linebacker. So Hogs, 2-10 last year, first year under Chad Morris. Expect big, big improvement from the Razorbacks in 2019. Moving on down from 5-4, to four, the, the team that could give Alabama the biggest push, got to go with the LSU Tigers. Now, I had LSU initially at three, dropped them down to four. The reason why, LSU comes to Bryant, Denny Stadium to face the Crimson Tide, and the Tigers have not fared well against the Tide since the 2011 game of the century, the final score being nine to six, have not fared well against Alabama since that day, that game, uh, The question being, has Ed Ogeron finally gotten the gist of delegating roles to other coaches, not trying to have his hand in everything, letting the offensive coordinator do his job, defensive coordinator Dave Aranda's been spectacular, but can Ed Ogeron fully 
give and delegate the offense to a coordinator to get that job done. They got pieces returning. Joe Burrow, the former transfer from Ohio State, gave him a lift a season ago. He's back. You lost Nick Brissett in the backfield. Got to find a running back and wide receiver. You return uh, Justin Jefferson. Also, Steven Sullivan is back at tight end. Defensively, yes, you lost Devin White, Grant Delpit, Greedy Williams, but you return Michael Definity Jr. and Richard Lawrence. So the biggest thing for LSU is can its offense be able to get jump started, come out there, play with fire, play with play fast, play with passion, play with balance against the Crimson Tide? They've lost some pieces. Some pieces are back. But the main thing for the Tigers is Ed Ogeron giving that freedom to his offensive coordinator and Joe Burrow building off his first year with the Tigers. But I got them. At number four, when when it's Alabama LSU, you never know what happens, as great as that rivalry is. Going on down with number three, for teams that could give Alabama the biggest push, in my mind, the South Carolina Gamecocks under Will Muschamp. And uh, this will be the first time that Alabama has traveled to williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, since the 2010 year, the year in which Alabama all 35 for 21 at the hand of Steve Spurrier, Steven Garcia, a quarterback, a freakish wide receiver, and Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, anything that could go wrong for Alabama in that game did go wrong as the, as the Crimson Tide took the loss there. But this time around for South Carolina, you got Jake Bentley, a quarterback, going into his senior year. And a guy that's kind of erratic at times throwing the football, but when he's on, he can be really, really good at the running back position. There lies Rico Dowdle. He returns at wide receiver. You lose Debo Samuel, but you bring back Brian Edwards and Shai Smith, two very capable guys on defense. They got a lot coming back. Linebacker TJ Bronson, a defensive lineman Javon Kinlo, who had 10 and a half. 10 tackles for loss and four and a half sacks. You've also got the son of former NFL wide receiver Joe Horn, defensive back J.C. Horn, who led the team in pass breakups with eight a season ago for the Gamecocks. So South Carolina's got talent back defensively, offensively. This group goes as far as Jake Bentley goes. And if he can be smooth in the pocket, solid in the pocket, make smart decisions with the football, this kid can be really good in giving Alabama that push. Gamecocks number three. Moving down to number two, I thought about putting this team at one, but I'm just not ready to pull it. At number two, I got Texas A&M. Alabama goes to College Station, Kyle Field, crazy down there. Jimbo Fisher, a lot of people believe he's the one. He's the Nick Saban disciple that can get a win over the old mentor. And Jimbo Fisher's an outstanding coach. He's a national championship head coach. You got the quarterback and Kellen Mond. You got a lot of big play receivers. Kendrick Rogers, Jamon Osborne, Cornery Davis. You got weapons. Defensively is the question for the Aggies. Ever since they came to the Southeastern Conference in 2012, defense has been the problem. They thought they could fix it with bringing in John Chavis as a defensive coordinator. He was great at Tennessee. He was great at LSU. But I believe past his prime at Texas A&M, maybe he can do something at Arkansas, but past his prime at A&M. And with the Aggies losing Landis Durham and Ontario Alaka and Donovan Wilson, just so many pieces gone to the NFL draft. Can Jimbo Fisher field a defense that can strike some fear? Can he field a defense that can play smart? that can be instinctive, that can create sacks, that can create turnovers. Can they field a defense that will be nasty in the SEC? That's the biggest question for Jimbo. If the Aggies can do it, be interesting. But that's the question mark. I got him at number two, which leaves me with the number one team that could give Alabama the biggest push, the Auburn Tigers. You go to Jordan. Hare Stadium in Auburn this upcoming season. They got the quarterback situation between 
either Bo Nix or Joey Gatewood. It's narrowed down for those two. Gus Malzahn will make the decision off that. You've got seven different backs you can go to. The leader in the clubhouse right now, Jatarvius Whitlow. You've got a lot of big-time receivers led by Seth, uh, Seth Williams, the product of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Paul Bryant High School. Defensively, you got a lot of guys coming back. Derrick Brown, Nick Cole, Marlon Davidson. I mean, the list goes on. They have a lot of major returning starters. Jeremiah Denson also in that secondary under the likes of defensive coordinator Kevin Steele. You got Anders Carlson coming back, the brother of Daniel Carlson supplying the kicking game on field goals. And uh, crazy things happen in Jordan Hare. I don't have to go any further than that. We all know this. So for the Auburn Tigers, the question will be, can they locate the quarterback? Can they have an offensive line that can protect either Nix or Gatewood? And can Auburn get back to having that fast strike type of offense? And also the same thing that lies with that lies with Ed Ogeron goes extra for Gus Malzahn. Can you trust the offensive coordinator? Can you delegate the role to him? Let him call the plays. I know Gus Malzahn is regarded as an offensive guru, but can he trust the offensive coordinator and let him run the show? That remains to be seen. So, people, running back through this again, my five teams that could give Alabama the biggest push in the regular season for 2019. At number five, I got the Arkansas Razorbacks. They're going to be much improved. Number four, I got the LSU Tigers. Ed Ogeron, Kenny Delegate. How much of a jump can Joe Burrow take? Number three, South Carolina Gamecocks really like Jake Bentley. How much has he grown? That defense, they got some players back. Number two, the Texas A&M Aggies. Jimbo Fisher, can it finally field a fierce, complete defense in this conference? You got the quarterback in Kellen Mond and receivers around him. And at number one, the Auburn Tigers. They got something brewing down there in Jordan Hare. But can Gus Malzahn put it all together for Auburn. That's going to do it here for In My Own Words, this week's edition of shows. Folks, as always, you check out the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app for all your news, notes, and information. You download it via the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you got the Android phone. You can check out those podcast options at the bottom of the screen. When we return to start next week, we bring on my man, Matt Cadell, former Alabama wide receiver, joins the show. Till next time, folks, for all of us at the Touchdown Alabama Magazine brand, I'm yours truly, Stephen M. Smith. This has been In My Own Words. (laughs) 